In our studies involving skin disorders here at Grand Medicine, certain concepts stand out. Quoting from Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, quote, The challenge of examining the skin lies in distinguishing normal from abnormal, significant findings from trivial ones, and in integrating pertinent signs and symptoms into an appropriate differential diagnosis." Unquote. In fact, most signs presenting on the skin actually involve internal processes, that is, problems inside the body, and not so much about the skin itself. The range goes from goosebumps to cancer. Here's an example. A patient presents with a large, nasty-looking patch on the skin of his left lower leg, above the ankle. Both patient and healer are wondering, could this be a malignancy? Now, all of the latest iridology and sclerology maps tell us that the skin areas are located in the outermost map zone. Straightforward enough. If the maps show the skin in their outer zone, the outer zone is where we should see the iology marking that represents the lesion, right? Well, not necessarily. Per the Harrison's quote, and as we at Grand Medicine have been observing through the years, the skin could well be reflecting other bodily problems, especially chronic ones. The left iris image here could be referencing the leg circumstance as a raised white radial with rarefaction. Now, although we do see an apparent neoplasm uh, vulnerable sign in the sclera skin zone of the left leg, many other body areas are showing these signs in both the iris and the scleras. We see these neoplasm vulnerable signs also in the descending colon, the sigmoid, the spleen, the right lymphatic duct, the bronchus, the prostate, and the liver we seem to be getting increasing evidence that the skin situation, in iology terms, is essentially reflecting significant problems inside his body. In a further attempt to resolve this issue, we look back into the patient's intake health questionnaire, where we learn both family and personal histories of bowel problems are occurring. Another factor to consider is that both the bowel and the skin are major organs of elimination which fact ties them together functionally. We reason that this could well uh, have influenced the appearance of the uh, nearby sclera marker, making it a sign of an attempted purification. We also note that while the patient's diet generally uh, seems to be well above average, he had a lifelong exposure to chemicals and heavy metals, both environmental and occupational. We then take the opportunity to review everything Deck said about cancer in his iridology books. Meanwhile, based on the many neoplasm vulnerable signs in his eyes, we recommended medical examination. On medical evaluation, the patient learns that, indeed, the leg lesion is a squamous cell carcinoma. Another medical test, the PCA3, or Prostate Cancer Antigen 3 gene test, showed overexpression at 50. Since the non-cancer cutoff is under 30, he is positive for prostate cancer. His toxic element clearance profile from his urine showed his body high in several areas, especially lead, aluminum, arsenic, gadolinium, and uranium. Our patient had lived in an area where the water was high in arsenic, as well he had worked for years in electronics with aluminum and lead and had many gadolinium-bearing medical body imaging, CAT scans, and MRIs. He also lived right down the street from a laundromat where clothing from workers at the Los Alamos National Laboratory was being cleaned. This laundromat was closed down when it was discovered that the whole place was highly radioactive. In fact, it was reported that the city's water supply was being contaminated accordingly. Although heavy metal toxicity is involved in many disease processes, arsenic is of particular interest in this study due to it being one of the risk factors in squamous cell carcinoma. Arsenic toxicity is associated with skin, kidney, liver, lung, prostate, and bladder cancers. 
Skin cancer risk factors specifically include exposure to UV light, fair skin, older age, being male, chemical slash heavy metal exposure, weakened immune, HPV, and blue eyes, all of which were true of this patient. What have we learned? What is the bottom line here? We must look at all the evidence, not just the iology markers. Where is the lesion uh, on or in the body? What are the patient's complaints, signs, and symptoms? What are his diet and lifestyle habits? What about family disorders? What do other health practitioners and their tests say about the situation? When everything is considered to the best of our ability, we make our recommendations. To learn more about this natural science, please visit our website at iology.com or contact us at gm at grandmedicine.com.